I'm Susanna and I'm going to read some stories from The Adventures of Pearl and Plain and this was a book uh, published in 1941 by George G. Harrop. Publishers are now out of date and anybody who's familiar with Millie Molly Mandy will love Joyce Lancaster Breezley's series on Dutch dolls and it's got some lovely illustrations just like Millie Molly Mandy used to have. But it's a book that nobody really knows about, so um, I hope you enjoy some stories. And these are for adults too. Adventure in the Garden Once upon a time, there were two little dolls whose names were Pearl and Plain. Pearl wore a spotted dress and Plain wore a plaid one. Otherwise, you had to look at them very closely to tell them apart. And then you would notice that Pearl's blue paint eyes were a bit rounder than Plain's and Plain's wooden nose poked out a bit more than Pearl's. At first sight, the two little dolls seemed as if they might be rather prim and proper. But they weren't. They just loved adventures. They were as pleased as anything if they could fall out of the window or into the coal bucket. Once, Plain fell into the dustbin and nearly got carted away with the rubbish. She was rescued only just in time and had to be washed and set inside the nursery fender to dry. But she was so pleased with herself for having such an adventure that Pearl quite wished she had managed to fall in too. One day, Pearl and Plain were sitting on the nursery windowsill with their shiny black heads leaning against the glass, looking out into the garden. Suddenly, Plain said, Pearl, we're getting stuffy. We need an adventure. Do you know what we'll do? Oh, what plane, said Pearl. We'll go out there in the wild and we'll stay out all by ourselves all night. <gasps> Pearl knocked her wooden arms excitedly together. We will plane, she said, all by ourselves like real adventurers and not come back till morning. Do we take luggage? Yes, said plane, tied up in bundles in our shawls. That's proper for adventurers. Come on now, let's pack. So they dropped off the windowsill and ran on their stiff jointed legs to the nursery cupboard. Plain tossed things about to right and left till she found two crumbled squares of spotted and plaid stuff which she dragged from under a box of bricks and spread on the floor. Then Pearl solemnly got out a ball, a little box of beads and a clockwork mouse and then put them on her shawl. You don't want things like that out in the wild, Plain scoffed. You want useful things. Look. I'll show you. So she rummaged about and bought out two doll's house cups and plates, a saucepan, a tiny scent bottle to carry water in, she explained, a pink Christmas candle and a rather dusty crust of bread. All useful things you see, Pearl, said Plain. Mm, yes, Plain, said Pearl. And she added an elastic band and a piece of string to show that she understood. But all the same, while Plain wasn't looking, Pearl slipped in her clockwork mouse, so there. With their bundles on their backs, the two adventurers climbed down mountains of stairs out into the garden. My, what a great place, said Pearl. Yes, said Plain, and there are wild animals here, black and striped with long tails and claws that yowl in the night. <gasps> Ooh, shivered Pearl, but we aren't afraid of them, are we, Plain? No, we. If they come too close, we say boo and shoo, like that, and send them off in a hurry. The wild was very beautiful, with nasturtiums and pinks blooming in great clumps beside the path, scenting all the air. Pearl stopped to bury her nose in them. Come on, plane, don't waste time. We've got hundreds of miles to travel before night. I was just sucking the honey out, said Pearl. I'm getting hungry. So Plain stopped to suck honey too. And just at that moment, there came from a way up above them a great big growly voice. Now then, you, what you doing on my tidy path? It said, you'd better clear out or I might sweep you up by mistake and throw you out on the rubbish heap. It was a great big gardener with a great big broom in his hands. He didn't look quite like the wild animals Plain had been talking about, but Pearl got all ready to say boo and shoo when Plain did. But Plain didn't. 
She only gave a jump and said, Ooh, in a tiny little voice. And they picked up their bundles and clattered off down the path in a hurry. Why didn't we say boo to him? asked Pearl when they had got safely away. Oh, you never do to gardeners, said Plain. Only to wild animals that yowl in the night. Well, don't gardeners yowl in the night, Plain? Well, of course they don't, Pearl. Well, how do you know, Plain? Plain couldn't think of anything to say to that, but don't be silly, Pearl. So she said it, and they journeyed on in silence for several miles, until they crossed the lawn, in fact. Presently, the wild grew more wild. There was a rockery to climb and a high box hedge to creep through. Then they came to a place where there was a big grey mound where a bonfire had been, and a big hole full of garden rubbish, cabbage leaves, potato peelings and eggshells, and near it a soft green hill of fine grass cuttings, newly emptied from the lawn mower. This is a nice place, Pearl, said Plain, looking around. We could burrow into the grass cuttings to sleep, and wash in the bird bath there in the morning. Yes, said Pearl, running to the rubbish pit. And look! Little green apples and cabbage leaves and some teeny weeny potatoes. There's lots of doll food here, Plain, and I'm so hungry. So they got out the doll's house saucepan and filled it with water from the bird bath. Then they put in a tiny little potato and a piece of cabbage stalk and bits of eggshell for flavouring and set the stew on top of the old bonfire to cook while they spread a shawl for a tablecloth and set cups and plates on it. They picked nasturtium seeds to mix little green apples for a tasty dessert. The stew soon cooked and smelled very delicious. The dolls were just sniffing at it hungrily, wondering if it were done, when suddenly there came a rustling in the bushes behind them. Pearl and Plain jumped so that their wooden heads knocked together. A large black animal with a long tail and whiskers stared at them with yellow eyes. Mew! It said alarmingly. Ooh, whispered Pearl. It's a wild animal. What do we do now? Boo, said Plain faintly, waving one arm. The wild animal only stared, swaying the tip of its tail to and fro. Shoo, said Plain, more faintly and not waving. But the animal only began to step daintily over the eggshells and leaves in the rubbish pit towards them to see what was going on. Pearl had a sudden idea. Quickly, she got the clockwork mouse from her bundle, wound it up and set it at the terrifying wild animal. The mouse whirred over the ground a little way, then fell on its side, still whirring. But the cat leapt back and was away behind the bushes in a flash. Ha ha! said Plain, strutting up and down, waving her arms. We know how to deal with those wild animals. They can't scare us. Well, where did you get that clockwork mouse, Pearl? I brought it with me from the toy cupboard, said Pearl firmly, putting it away. I thought it might come in useful. Well, said Plain, well, let's have supper now. The stew's cooked. So they gobbled up their supper till there wasn't a bit left. And then they set to work to make a house in the grass heap. A cardboard box lid from the rubbish pit, propped up with twigs, made the roof. Grass was piled all over it, and the grass floor scooped out under it like a cosy nest. And then Pearl and Plain, well wrapped in their shawls, crawled in and pulled the grass up over the entrance. And there they lay, snug as could be, with their crockery and pots safely buried beside them and the bottle of water, the crust, and the pink Christmas candle handy in case of need. And nobody, not even the gardener, could possibly have guessed that two little wooden dolls were inside that grass heap. They slept all night, as sweetly as wooden dolls can sleep. And even though it rained a little in the night, they were quite dry when they came home to the nursery after breakfast the next morning. That was a proper adventure.